Um, okay, so I'm a little bit into the the detailing process right now, and uh, I just thought I'd show a bit, uh, show some footage of um, what exactly I'm doing on this thing, uh, and the technique that I've come up with, that I've used for most of the models I've ever done is, I use my favourite brush, the uh, the clay builder brush, square alpha, you know, focus shift is zero, and I just literally brush down this thing following all the way down from my existing sculpt that I did underneath you know just going over so I get all these nice lines everywhere so what I like to do is I like to detail things like I don't like to leave uh, areas sort of like smooth and stuff because the sort of the look that I want to achieve is like this sort of you know, like tight skin sort of feel. You know, it's generally disgusting. You know, a sort of horrible look. Quite like Marco's uh, creature, with all the mechanical parts uh, integrated into its body. Kind of like that, but mine's a bit more sort of noisy, uh, with lines everywhere. And you know, just using this method of, you know, just uh, stroking all the way down. It just leaves a lot of noise behind anyway, uh, and it also refines the shape a little bit. Now there's a bit more resolution on this mesh. Previously, when I did uh, the sculpting before, so just do this for the area that you've got masked out or hidden or whatever you want to call it. But you know, don't get lazy with it. You know, I've I've seen a lot of people where you know they're doing the final details and they just mask out like an arm. You know, be a bit more specific than that. You know, masking something really specific, like I'm doing these flexes now. And uh, yeah, just really sort of go to town on it and try and sort of excel yourself. I think it's a bit more tight now, and uh, I'm going for like a. So sort of like I've got going up here, you know, I've got like these little holes and stuff everywhere where I don't know. All these little cavities going on and stuff. Uh it doesn't really make much sense to be honest with you, but I quite like the look of it. And that's the fun thing about doing creatures. You know, sometimes it doesn't have to make a lot of scientific sense. Um as long as it looks convincing and the detail is, you know, legit, you can probably get away with stuff like this. So I'm just gonna go down now randomly, pick out areas where I want these cavities to be. You know, I'm just thinking about like how skin would react on something like this, you know, how would it stretch and you know, sort of wrap around stuff. That really sort of disgusting look. I'm trying to achieve with this guy. Uh, plus, I also like the fact that it breaks up the forms a little bit as well. You know. But, um, there's not really much to say else about detailing. You know, I mean, the one thing I would say is that you shouldn't try and emulate me. You shouldn't try and copy exactly what I am doing. Um, because you know what I'm doing is is a method that I've come up with myself. You know, it's from messing around in ZBrush and you know just you know having fun with what I've got and just testing out different brushes and stuff like that. So if you try and emulate what I'm doing, it won't be sort of true to yourself. If you understand what I'm saying, you know you've got to sort of figure out what brushes you like. You know, as a person, because everyone has individual tastes and. Um, you know, some brushes behave differently, and you know, I just, I just like how, you know, these brushes work that I'm using right now. You know, I mean, by all means, you know, take what you want from what I'm showing you, and you know, change it up and explore different ideas. But just don't try and, you know, directly copy my technique, or, you know, just maybe use the brushes and just try and find your own methods of you know what kind of look you want to go for on your model so I'd assume that most of you don't want to make some <laughs> like skinny sort of you know all this like I don't know it's kind of zombie sort of 
dead flesh sort of look. I don't know, I've always thought it looked cool. And it's very hard to achieve. It takes a very long time. But I've always appreciated stuff like this, so. Yeah. I, mean, I don't mind doing stuff like this, you know, all the detail and stuff, but it's very hard to keep yourself motivated as essentially you're just doing the same thing over and over again on a model. It's very time consuming. That's probably why doing that uh, retopologization earlier on is probably a better thing because in the past, you know, I've been modeling stuff and, um, you know, when I've got to the end, when I've finished the completed model, you know, I've spent like, you know, 30, 40 hours sculpting this thing and then I have to take it into Maya and retop it, you know, just the prospect of it, you're like, oh, I, I really don't want to do this. But now that I've retopped it earlier on, you know, once I've finished this model and I've been working on this thing for, you know, 40 hours and I already have, you know, the retop the model already there, maybe I need to edit, edit it a few, you know, change some of the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I can't speak, change some of the, uh, the flow of lines and edge loops, that's all the word I was looking for. I might need to think about edge loops a bit more, you know, as I'm going to be retopping it for all the game mesh. Um, but other than that, you know, the the prospect of starting an entirely different new model would be, it's pretty awful, you know, when you've been working on something for 40 hours. You know, your mentality is, you know, well, I really don't want to be doing this anymore. And, you know, no matter how much you enjoy sculpting and making characters, you will always reach a point where you just don't want to continue. You know, that's 40 hours is a long time to be working on the same thing. So I think doing that retop early on is just positive stuff. Yeah. I'm going to sort of finish this up as well, I can show you the details that were going on right now. Still pretty early on, I've only got the chest and most of the arms done. I just need to do these flexors and a bit on the underside and the hands and the arms are sort of pretty much done for the big details. I call these big details because they're sort of pre-predominant things, you can see them um, you know, from a distance and then once I've got like these major details sort of done on the entire model, I go around once more and add micro details using all these alphas that I've got, which I will do after I've finished this um, sculpt. You'll I'll probably see this later on. Uh, you'll see that later on when I complete this. But for now, I'm going to show you the technique I'm using. Finish it up, then I'll do the micro details and probably put in some base colours for the poly paint. Let's just see what that looks like. It's looking pretty good. One thing I would advise when you're detailing stuff is to think about consistency. Uh, I'm going to try and make this, well, try. I am going to make this look like this for the entire model. Okay. Here's some drumsticks. Right. Let me just pause this a sec. Sorry, my dad came upstairs and wanted to talk to me. So, what I like to do now is I like to go to slash three, which uh, the hotkey is B S three, you know, brush slash three. Uh, I like Slash 3 because um, you can really uh, get that tight detail in those tight lines which is very nice for the illusion of tight skin. Uh, I, the original opacity, uh, opacity <laughs> in Photoshop, the original intensity is 70, I set to 60 so I get a little bit more control. Um, uh, what I like to do now is I like to really sort of separate the forms a little bit between the um, muscles I've got going on and then I sometimes like to complement the lines I've got from the, the brush strokes I used oh my god someone else has come upstairs and back <laughs> sorry about that um, 
again you know just, just basically follow around what you've already got and just enhance what you, you what you've already you've already sculpted with this brush um, never try and use it to make new details it just doesn't work this brush um, probably only works for enhancing details that you've already got um, but it is a really fun brush to use um, can be substituted for the standard brush if you want works in similar ways but um, I don't know, I just, it's, I've always used Slash Free it's very effective one of my favourite brushes as well even though the uses for it is quite limited but you can create some really brutal details with this brush you know get those lines really crisp I think the detailing process, um, a good thing about doing detailing is to have a uh, pretty strong taste in music uh, because you know you're doing something up to 40 hours, you know, you want to sort of put your mind somewhere positive. And one of the things that I use is my music, you know, I'm quite. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm quite into music. You know, and some people you know don't really listen to music. Uh, I myself could listen to music just only the music. You know, I can sit and listen to music and just enjoy it. You know, I don't have to use it as background music. You know, I am a massive music fan, and it really does help when I'm grinding this out. So, my advice, you know, if you're entering this stage, you know, make a playlist of like your favorite stuff, stuff that gets you pumped, uh, excited and uh, yeah just listen to that and just really sort of go a bit crazy um, it's probably why I like having an empty house as well because <laughs> I really sort of like start to sing like pretty loud sometimes when I'm doing this stuff and um, I've had numerous occasions where my mum would like be standing behind me and I'm, you know, and I'm into sort of like metal as well so you know sometimes I do the uh, the screaming parts of the songs which is pretty bad when your mom is still behind you and she thinks you're like possessed by some like demon or something <laughs> but you know I think taking the detailing process pretty seriously is very rewarding um, it's just you can really notice when someone's put the time and effort into a model and uh, when someone's like been lazy with it uh, I've always found as well that um, it's, you get far better results if you, um, I don't know, just experiment with different types of strokes. You know, like, are you going to be like choppy and really sort of sketchy or long, sort of hard strokes? Each brush sort of, I don't know, reacts differently depending on how you use it. Uh, but that's just sort of like comes from messing around. And I've heard that term so many times, you know, when I've been learning software and watching training videos and stuff, you know. And it just seems to be the case that the more you mess around at something, you're trying to better yourself out, the better you'll be at it. So, you know, if you have some spare time or you're just you're feeling a bit frustrated with um, your, your, your sculpting progress or your, you know, your technique, literally just open ZBrush, have a very clear mind and then just mess around, you know. Don't even worry about making something good. You know, you're just literally, you know, you're just feeling it out. You know, you're just trying to figure something out. You know, what you can take and use in context. So it's looking pretty brutal now. See, that's the kind of look I'm going for. You know, it's like all this sort of weird 
sort of joining skin sort of look. Doesn't really make much sense, but I don't know, I just enjoy it. Okay, I'll show you what they've done on the arm. Uh, the details that I'm coming up with now. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, I'm just trying to make it look very brutal, you know, like all this stretching and kind of mutated sort of, maybe sort of borderline boiled skin, like it's been burnt or something like that, I don't know. Um, but that's what it's looking like at the minute. Uh, we'll have to go around and make this entire mess look like this now, which is being time consuming. But that's pretty much the process I'm using right now. Just the combination of um, clay build up and slash. Maybe a bit of move every now and again. If I see like let me see if I can find any areas that I need moving. Um I like to look at lines, you know, that I'm seeing, you know, like when it's a bit bumpy around here, you know, sometimes so when I want like a very sort of smooth line everywhere. Make it very streamlined, look like it's you know, because my muscles are sort of tight and uh, under some strain, they have that sort of specific curvature to them. And I'm just looking at that every time I analyse my model. You know what what needs pulling and pushing in certain directions. Because you, sometimes when you're sculpting stuff, you know you don't. You know, it's like this area here. You know it's sort of it's all over the place. You know it's not streamlined. So I use that technique as well to sort of just brush around and train. And give it that nice curvy feel that I want. But that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Um, yeah, I'm quite excited to do this area, and uh, I've decided for the actual the gills. I'm going to treat it like Fane Krios from Mass Effect. If you look at the side of his face, the gills that he have are really flat. Uh, but for some reason, they just look really nice. So I was actually going to make it like a mushroom. You know, when you look at the underside of a mushroom, it has like those really thin things. But I just don't think that it'd look as cool if I just had the, the flat gills, you know, so it has that deep cavity. Because the, the idea that I had before would kind of fill that cavity with all those. Um, thin lines everywhere so I'm just gonna go for that Fane Krios grill kind of look um, yeah that's pretty much it so far depending on how the micro detail process goes it might change a little bit uh, I can never really be too sure what's gonna happen with that as uh, I have quite a big sort of library of alphas now that I've got from the internet and you know there's quite a lot of possibilities and what I can go for now so who knows? But I'm quite pleased with it so far. Uh, I quite like the the, uh, the sort of details I'm getting out of this thing. Uh, just gotta continue with this now and uh, try and keep my motivation up. <laughs> Hopefully, in a few seconds when I piss pause, it'll load up the next part and it'll be fully completed. Um, Right, let's switch this over. Uh, it's changed quite considerably last time, and uh, quite a random decision, really. Uh, I was on YouTube and uh, I saw like this uh, video for like uh, the greatest '90s uh, kids' cartoon theme tunes, and uh, amongst that, there's a show called Street Sharks <laughs> that I used to watch when I was a kid. Uh, basically, it's just some like teenagers who turn into these big. Like, it's just like a shark's head, but with like a pair of shorts on. So, you know, my character already looking like a, a shark. I kind of sort of just went for that look. I'm just kind of turning into this gangster. This kind of gangster shark. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. It's just like a shark with legs, basically. It was awesome back in the day. So I'll show you what it looks like now. Just trying to back out. Um, that's pretty much what I've got. Uh, modeling's modeling stage is pretty much done, in my opinion. 
I don't know, I just really took my time with this one. Um, I, I stopped working on it for a while. Uh, just, I've been you know, dealing with a lot of depression and stuff, so it's quite hard to get motivated when you feel like shit. But uh, the detail is, you know, it's pretty high in fidelity. Uh, really sort of gone around everywhere and tightened everything up, all the muscle groups and stuff. And, you know, I've got everything that I wanted to get out of it in that sense. Um, it's really come together when I put the teeth in there as well, before it was just like, you know, all gummy and stuff. So, um, But the clothes, so the clothes uh, were pretty last minute. Me, uh, it's like I just decided, you know, when I saw the the YouTube video, I was like, yeah, I mean, that's kind of cool, making gangster looking, you know, put some shorts on, some big boots. Uh, I'm not too sure about this wristband anymore. It looks a bit weird. Uh, I might change that if I can be bothered to. Uh, maybe like a really sort of fat chain, you know, like I don't know, like gold watch or something, or I don't know, like a pair of knuckle dusters. I don't know. Um. But the modeling stage for me right now is is pretty much complete. Um, it's kind of uh, I don't know, like my own sort of you know weird style. I I seem to have developed over this you know over the time I've sculpted stuff. You know, I just it's I don't know. My my style is kind of like um, it reminds me of Borderlands a little bit, but um, it's a bit more. I don't know, especially this skin detail that's going on. But the clothing is pretty, you know, pretty comic book style, cartoony, you know, it's kind of big, big and bold. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with it, I guess. I mean, it's got a decent, it's got quite a nice silhouette to him, nice shape, nice lines. Uh, but if some of you have been watching my videos, you know, trying to um, learn stuff, then you probably like kind of, you know, what, what, <laughs> how did you get to this kind of feeling, you know? So, um, I didn't use extraction too much. I did for the boots because um, boots. Uh, cause I, I was thinking about um, trying to keep a, like a, having a really low res version of my stuff. Like if I just slightly these shorts and I go all down, you know, it's quite. I ended up dynamashing the shorts again, but I just due to complications on the crotch area <coughs> because the uh, the underlying mesh that I had uh, from this mesh here was because he had like a pot belly going on, so like, it was hard to get like that shape there. But what I actually did is instead of you know masking out, because what usually people do is um, they would mask out like this area here where they want the shorts, and then. Uh, Obviously, do the back as well. I may as well just do this. Don't know why I'm <coughs> losing my voice now. <laughs> but they mask out the area they want, and uh, they go over to uh, Subtool Palette over here, and they would come down to here, and they would hit you know change the settings you need to be, hit extract, hit accept, and you get like um, this sort of thin mesh out of here. Uh, which is good, it does the job and everything, especially if you want to create like uh, the actual real illusion of clothing which has um, you know the ending bit but what I found is a lot nicer to work with is to just let me lower the uh, subdivision level down you see what I mean by the pot belly and getting that like, sort of sharp edge to it, what I like to do now is now that I, have, I, now that I can go this low uh, just quite simply duplicate it the hotkey for duplicating is uh, Control Shift D, which uh, is pretty cool if you're working fast, you know, doing all this stuff like pulling out new areas of uh, detail and stuff. And uh, you know, I just um, use my select rectangle to uh, roughly select where I want these shorts or pants to go. I might actually jump up to the next level so I can get a better, um, it's better edges. Edges are real, really not, you know, quite what I wanted. Uh, but when you duplicate stuff, it'll still have that first one selected. Uh, always select that one because when you save it, it's going to save under the the, uh, the new name. So uh, make sure you're on the uh, the uh, the <laughs> the sub tool that's below the top one. Just so this is a little nitpicky sort of thing. But so I've got this 
area selected where I want these cloves to be and uh, you know you may be thinking well what you know it's not really workable all of them hid in the mesh well what you can do with this is um, it does require you to delete your history otherwise you won't be able to do it but you can delete the hidden so it's deleted everything I have hidden now uh, you know even if I do this and click and stuff it will not reveal the mesh that I had before because I've deleted the hidden and then you have the problem of these holes uh, which is easily fixed just by pressing close holes uh, as these areas don't really matter because obviously the body and bottom of the legs is uh, going to be covering that um, and from there you've got you know a nice workable mesh and the thing I don't like about using extraction is that it's very thin um, you know especially when you try to do really complicated uh, complicated um, creases and stuff you know you can, you can sort of it just becomes really problematic sometimes uh, and I much prefer working with meshes like uh, like this. Um, but you can use the clipping brushes too. Um, the hotkey for the the, uh, the sort of clip line is uh, B C C. You probably get a warning message to say don't show it again. Uh, and you can just sort of clip around now and uh, really sort of define the edges that you've got. Uh, start to relax it up and stuff, and uh, just you know start to pull it around. Uh, accordingly to what you need to be, but you know, like I was saying before, this area right here was you know pretty unworkable. You know, it's just the, uh, the topology and uh, the way I'd built his legs just weren't working to uh, make some something like make, make a pair of shorts. Um, so I had to make a rough shape and then I dynameshed it and you know began sculpting on top of that. But that's pretty much you know how I started off for most of the clothing. Um, you know, like shorts, boxer shorts, uh, his socks, that wristband. The, well, the, the wristband I made in Maya um, for uh, noisemaker purposes, you know, to get the uh, straight UV maps, uh, which I talked about in a different video. Um, let's get rid of that. But, you know, that method I always find is a lot nicer than using extraction. But you know, sometimes uh, it can be a lot more time-consuming uh, than using extraction. So, if you're in a sort of uh, uh, like a, I don't know, you just or like a tight deadline or something, and you know, you probably just maybe want to use extraction and just get the things, get the features as soon as possible, you know, in there. But for me, I was thinking about, you know, I want to pose this guy, I want to put him, you know, I want to be able to move him around with confidence and. Not worry too much about uh, everything moving weirdly because my masks weren't smooth enough because I didn't, you know, I didn't have the ability to go down in resolution that much. But you know, for things like shoes and stuff, you'll must mainly be uh, rotating them uh, in accordance to where the feet are pointing. So it doesn't really matter that much for the shoes and uh, the socks as well. Mm. But. Um, that's pretty much it really, you know, I can't, you know, the shots, they're, they're pretty simple, the clothing, I didn't really spend much time on the clothing, you know, I spent like, maybe two hours on each one, you know, like the shorts and the boots, uh, it's pretty It's pretty quick and dirty, you know, I, I was just literally being, you know, I just sculpted all in there, there's no separate pieces, no separate, um, except these, um, where, where the belt goes in there, separate, but you know, I just I was just using you know stuff like um, like slash free and uh, standard brush with lazy mouse to define these lines. Sorry about that. Um, my dad has just developed uh, an annoying. No, 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 no. Is that deleted it? <laughs> Yeah, he's just become exceptionally good at timing his um, appearances in my bedroom, which is annoying. But like I was saying, um, it's pretty much done, modeling wise, sculpting wise. Um, don't think I can work on this anymore now. You know, just the motivation for it is just gone. <laughs> She's pretty bad as I'm supposed to be like passionate about this, but believe me. Once you start doing this stuff, you will feel a certain amount of, uh, I don't know, just apprehension towards doing stuff like this. You know? 
you just get to a point where you just can't work on something anymore uh, but I've reached a point now where I can poly paint this uh, and poly painting for me is is like really fun uh, because you know you're not having to think too much about the model itself you know you've done all this sort of hard thinking uh, in the modeling stage you know what is it what what's it about how does it muscles work how is it you know what's this attitude like um the poly paint stage is 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 quite simply enhancing what you've got really and you know it's uh in my opinion uh to get a, a nice poly paint a nice you know set of color from this uh the model itself needs to have you know quite a significant amount of detail if it's very sort of um uh, i've seen a lot of models where you know they just look very sort of uh like uh like play-doh or something you know um they just not really distinguished in terms of having in terms of having uh like a uh, detail and like you know like skin pores and uh that sort of stuff uh because poly paint um Unless you um, just you're using like projection, you know, where you get like an image and you can project the detail. Like you know, people use that for face and stuff, but for something like this, you can't really do that. Uh, this is nothing. I mean, there is things that you could. There is photographs I could use to obviously get some sort of texture, but I feel that I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to um, be. Uh, you know, try to produce. Uh, the illusion of more detail through a photograph. I, I should have done that in the modeling stage, and I have really, you know, the detail on the skin and stuff is all there. Um, you can maybe sort of run over with the skin brush, you know, just to really get some intricate stuff going on. Um, but, you know, as for the uh, the clothing detail, like uh, the material sort of, you know, really sort of tiny microscopic detail. Uh, well, maybe not microscopic, but you know, if it's a ZBrush, I'd, I'd say it's microscopic. If it's a ZBrush, you know, to add that sort of level of detail, um, it's just a pain in the ass, really, if you're doing it on ZBrush. And uh, yeah, I can't really go into that sort of amount of polygons on my machine because my machine is like, you know, three, four years old, so uh, I have to really sort of be poly conscious when I'm in ZBrush sometimes. And this is probably much like the highest I can go is like 10. You know, ten, twenty million. Twenty million is like really sort of high end heavy for my my computer. So I do a lot of that work in uh, Photoshop, uh, just using photographs and stuff, and I just lay it on top. Um, but the poly painting uses a thing called masking. Uh, uses masking, uh, cavity masking, which basically um, best way to describe it is it. Uh, it takes like a calculation uh, of all the bumps, like the high points and low points of your mesh, and it masks it according to the settings you put into that. And uh, you can get some really nice effects that really enhance the detail that you've got there. You know, like um, just painting in dark areas where it's uh, the cavities have been pushed in, and uh, you know you can get some really effective results. And uh, you'll see what I mean when I use that masking method. And uh, if you've never poly painted anything before, it's probably going to feel a little bit intimidating at first because applying color, uh, col color is a hard thing to do. Um, I'm going to stick to, you know, sharks in general. You know, they have like a sort of really sort of white underbelly color and uh, this ocean blue for his back. You know, kind of sort of color scheme. Uh, I'm going to use a navy blue for his jeans because he's meant to be denim, hence why they're so rigid and uh, there's not many creases in them because denim is uh, quite a resilient, resilient cloth. You know, I actually have a pair of denim shorts, so I use them as reference and I was wearing them uh, and looking at myself in the mirror. So, but the creases are a bit funky around here and stuff, but to be honest with you, I'm not, I don't really care that much. The clothing was so last minute. Um, yeah, I think he works as a character. Um, he's got his, a very nice appeal about him. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. I'm gonna poly paint this in a few minutes. Uh, yeah. Once I've poly painted, I'm gonna pose him up in ZBrush a little bit. You know, I'm gonna give him that sort of attitude stance that gangsters do. 
uh, well, you know, stereotypical gangsters, you know, like, the sort of pose where they, you know, like, they have their arms, you know, kind of like, you know, like, what are you going to do, man, what's up, man, that kind of stuff, I'm going to go for that, uh, you know, he's like, his shoulders are sort of, you know, like, raised up a little bit, uh, yeah, but that's, that's pretty much it, modelling, sculpting wise. Took long enough, like I said, uh, barely even works on this much, you know, I just, I don't know, I just kind of lost all motivation to live recently, you know, I've just been moping around, not really doing much, just playing video games and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, I won't go into that awful stage again. I'll tell you one thing though, I recently blocked my ear up. Uh, Self-inflicted wound, I basically just shoved the, ear, uh, the earbud right into my ear, really deep. And I pushed all the wax and uh, a bunch of wax basically stuck to my eardrum. And now, <laughs> it's one of the most annoying pains that I've had to put up with. And it lasted for like a week. Uh, the only way I describe it to you is it's like you know when you get punched in the balls and uh, it's sort of that really sort of endearing deep ache you know it's like oh it's so unbearable but it was like it wasn't that pain it wasn't as, it wasn't as painful as being kicked in the balls but that sort of pain was it's a very similar feeling to that but in my ear and it just went on it was just this constant ache oh, it was disgusting man so glad I got that sorted out um yeah, I just, I'm never ever going to shove an earbud into my ear like that again. <laughs> it's just awful, man. But, um, you know, I just, I don't know what it is about me, you know, I think I, you know, I, I had the idea that I was bipolar or something, you know. I kind of just, I'm never either, I'm never just normal, I know, I'm never just like, I'm never just satisfied, you know, I'm either super happy or I'm just really miserable. <laughs> And I think what I've been going recently, going through recently, is just a really miserable stage. You know, I just, I just can't be bothered to do anything. You know, the sort of depression where, when you, when you wake up in the morning, you're, you're disappointed that you're woken up. That sort of depression. You know, you just don't want to be there. You don't want to be alive. It's just rubbish. And uh, hopefully, I don't experience that for a while again. You know, I'm, I'm starting to come. I'm starting to feel a bit happier, a bit more motivated to do some more artwork. But yeah, I'm quite happy that I've churned this out. I mean, it's actually looking like something, you know, it's actually looking like, um, you know, a character. So the next video will be me applying colour to this thing. Save that out. I think I might eat now, uh, chill, maybe watch a film. I watch a lot of films, man. You know what? I'm a sucker for romantic comedies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and being a guy, I think that's uh, it's probably not. You well, know, it's not masculine at all, really. But I just enjoy. It, you know, it makes me feel really awesome. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. See you guys.